What's good, y'all? Joshua Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 craziest butterfly effects in WWE. Now, I think a lot of us can list some very crazy butterfly effects in WWE. I think the most noticeable one of recent years is obviously what happened at WWE day one of uh, pay-per-view at the time where the reports were rumored that Roman was supposed to lose to Brock Lesnar that night. That was the night he was supposed to lose. But if you guys remember, he ended up getting COVID. So they had to change the match and they put Brock Lesnar in that. Uh, I think it was a, it was originally supposed to be a fatal four way. Then it became uh, a five, five man match or whatnot for the uh, WWE championship. I believe that's what it was. I know it was a multi-man match. And they put him in that match, and he ended up pinning Big E to become the WWE Champion. And this is how we ended up getting, essentially, the legendary Roman Reigns title reign. That three, you know, three-plus year title reign, because he wasn't there. If he was there, then the reports were that he was supposed to lose to Brock that night. And we wouldn't have gotten this legendary reign. We probably wouldn't have gotten the Cody versus Roman matches at WrestleMania 39 and 40. Like a lot of things would have changed. Cody wouldn't have been champion. There's a lot of things that would have changed from that. So that has to be in this video. There's some other butterfly effects I'm sure people can talk about. Let's see if he brings them up. Appreciate all love support. Let's get right into this one, man small and somewhat trivial events may ultimately result in major consequences. When it comes to pro wrestling, specifically WWE, there are numerous moments that have altered the trajectory of the company forever. And if they never happened, then it's hard to know and accurately assess the future direction of WWE. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 of the craziest WWE butterfly effect moments. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Number 10, CM Punk doesn't walk out of WWE. In 2014, CM Punk shocked the wrestling world by walking out of WWE. He was frustrated with the yeah. system and he needed to escape the WWE bubble as it was doing him no favors whatsoever. Punk's departure sent shockwaves throughout WWE and before Punk left, he was said to be in one of the top matches at WrestleMania 30 against Triple H. Yeah. Punk leaving meant that WWE had to drastically move around the card and Punk leaving ultimately resulted in Daniel Bryan getting his much deserved moment in the main event. Triple That's crazy when you think about it. If Punk didn't leave, Bryan, uh, you know, Daniel Bryan at the time, he wouldn't have gotten that main event. Because he was supposed to wrestle Triple H that night. CM Punk. He wouldn't have gotten that main event. That's crazy. All because he left. Triple H would now face Bryan. With the winner being added to the Batista vs. Randy Orton WWE title main event. And finally, Bryan's planned match versus Sheamus would be cancelled completely. If Punk doesn't leave WWE in 2014 and decides to stick it out, does Bryan ever get his moment? Does no. Punk eventually leave the company even more disgruntled? Does Punk run himself into the ground to such an extent where he causes irreversible damage? Yeah. It's a crazy alternative timeline. Number 9. The planned finish at WrestleMania 30 goes ahead. The Divas title was defended for the first time at WrestleMania 30 when AJ Lee defended the title in a multi-women match. The original scripted finish was supposed to see AJ make Naomi tap out by cheating. It was reported that AJ would grab Naomi's hand and make Naomi tap out in that manner. This would have then allowed the feud to continue and for WWE to build to a huge AJ vs Naomi pay-per-view match. Oh, wow. The issue was that Naomi ended up actually tapping with her free hand, meaning that it looked like a legitimate win. Oh. Naomi had no legitimate reason to seek a rematch and as a result, this would have had a knock-on effect that would alter the women's division forever. Wow. Paige would then be called up to the main roster and would be booked to instantly defeat AJ on Raw after WrestleMania. Additionally, now that Paige was on the main roster, a planned Paige vs Charlotte Flair feud in NXT was cancelled and instead Flair would take on Natalya. This all-time classic NXT match resulted in Flair gaining a mass surge of momentum and this was a match that propelled her into the contention for being one of the strongest female stars in the company. Wow. Therefore, if the botch didn't go down at WrestleMania 30, Paige isn't called up, Flair doesn't receive her breakout moment and ultimately this could have hindered the presentation of I, now that one I didn't know. Uh, that's crazy. The women's division for many years wow. to come. Number eight, Mark Henry breaks the streak. 
There have been countless times over the years where WWE have made plans to end the streak. I think I heard Even about Even though this. the legendary streak was eventually conquered by Brock Lesnar in 2014, WWE put the wheels in motion for numerous wrestlers to get a huge boost by defeating The Undertaker, and in 2006, it looked like it was going to be Mark Henry. According to WWE executive Bruce Pritchard on his podcast, WWE were going to proceed with Henry breaking the streak. However, as WWE got closer to WrestleMania 22, Vince McMahon got cold feet. Uh -huh. Now, if Vince yeah, followed through on this, this move, then it would have changed everything. Mm -hmm. Henry would have emerged as WWE's top heel at the time, where he probably wasn't ready for the role. The Undertaker's matches against the likes of Shawn Michaels, CM Punk, and eventually Brock Lesnar wouldn't have had the streak element attached. Yeah, it would have kind of changed a lot of the elements, especially with the uh, uh, the Shawn Michaels match, because that was the whole thing. Him doing whatever he could to beat the streak. He felt like he was the one to do it. It takes away a lot of that emotional drama if Mark Henry would have won, but... It may have changed the trajectory of Mark Henry's career being the one guy to beat the streak. And there's no telling if these matches would have even taken place if the streak was no longer a marketing tool. Number 7. Finn Balor Doesn't Get Injured Yep, another the good WWE one. had grand plans for the launch of the Universal title in 2016. They would make Finn Balor the inaugural champion, and the yeah. idea was that Balor would be the face of Raw. Yeah. The plan was for Balor to enter into a feud with Kevin Owens, and then the belief was that Balor would be thrown into the middle of a Red Hot Owens and Chris Jericho storyline. Obviously, Balor got hurt, and he was subsequently forced to surrender the title after a lousy 24 hours. Yeah. But what would have happened if Balor didn't get injured? How would he have been presented? If Balor doesn't get hurt, Owens never becomes Universal Champion yeah. a few weeks later. And this also means that Goldberg likely doesn't win the title in early 2017. Wow. It would only be logical that Balor walks into WrestleMania 30 as Universal Champion against a top heel on Raw. And this leads to Goldberg and Brock Lesnar finishing their story without the Universal title. Wow. It, it, it's a double-edged sword because I wanted Kevin Owens to get the championship and that was such a cool moment to be able to watch that Monday Night Raw and to see that that was such a legendary moment so it would have taken away Kevin Owens winning that and getting that moment but at the same time it would have took away Kevin Owens getting beaten by Goldberg Goldberg even holding this title and then giving the title essentially back to to Brock at the time oh man it's that's a double-edged sword for sure attached to it. Number 6. Kevin Owens Doesn't Drop the Universal Title Following Finn Balor's unfortunate injury, the story between Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens dominated Raw. Yeah. The storyline received critical acclaim as fans loved it and the two had electric chemistry. Ultimately, the planned payoff to the storyline was Jericho challenging Owens for the Universal title, yeah. and this is something fans were actively pushing for. For sure. Unfortunately, overnight, this changed. The plans went from Jericho versus Owens for the Universal title in the main event of WrestleMania 33 to the two now competing for the US title. Speaking on Busted Open Radio, this is what Jericho had to say regarding the bold booking move from WWE and why it influenced him to leave the company. Hold on. If Let me read that. I can't get any higher than where I'm at, even though I've been at the top. If you can't put Jericho and Owens in the semi-main event at WrestleMania, especially when at one point it was slotted to be the main event in the eyes of the old man, Vince McMahon, a main event is a main event from a business perspective. I'll take first uh, over anything. Second is to me, not a, uh, a filler spot, but it's a spot where you get your 15 minutes to be on second with this angle that we had when it was des designated as first, I was told by Vince, you're going to win the world title from Kevin Owens in the main event of WrestleMania. Three days later, he changed it to Brock versus Goldberg and didn't tell me. Oh, uh, that sounds about Vince. The company. That's fucked up. If WWE gave Jericho the match everyone wanted, then there's no doubt about it. Jericho doesn't leave WWE. Yeah. Additionally, we all know that this booking move influenced Jericho to sign for AEW. And with AEW unable to attract the multi-time former WWE world champion, is the startup of AEW such a monumental success? It's a very interesting theory to think about. Yeah, when well, you really break it down. That's crazy. Number five, John Cena does a rap for Stephanie McMahon. Oh, I know about this Imagine one. a world in which John Cena is released in 2002. Crazy. Well, it actually almost happened. 
After a strong start to his WWE career, Cena was lingering around with nothing to do. Cena was on the chopping block and according to Cena, it seemed inevitable that he was going to be cut. However, this would all change when Stephanie McMahon overheard uh -huh. Cena freestyling and when McMahon asked Cena if he would be interested in bringing the character to TV, the rest was history. Yep. Cena would get so immensely over with the character that just a few days later, they would make the call to make Cena the face of the entire company. Yep, all because he was just rapping on the bus. If he never does that, there's no John Cena. There's no 16 title uh, wins. There's no epic promos. There's no classic matches. No classic feuds. You know, none of that. None of this exists if he doesn't happen to rap on the bus and Stephanie overhears it. What would have happened if McMahon had never heard Cena rap? Well, the release would have gone ahead and WWE would never find their next top guy. Who would have taken on Cena's role as the next face of the company and who would have carried the WWE throughout the PG era? That one rap was monumental in Cena's entire WWE career. Facts. Number four, Mustafa Ali never gets hurt. Another good one. An unfortunate one. injury to Mustafa Ali in 2019 changed the career of Kofi Kingston forever. Yeah. Kingston would replace Ali in the annual Elimination Chamber match, and Kingston's performance ignited such a positive fan response towards him that WWE had no choice but to deliver a Kingston yep. storyline, which would seem challenge for the WWE title at WrestleMania 35. Beautiful It's believed moment. that the original plans for WrestleMania 35 with Daniel Bryan versus Kevin Owens for the WWE title, and it's never been made clear what exactly WWE had in store when it came to Kingston. If Ali never got hurt, then Kingston is never pushed into the main event scene, yep. and this also means that the infamous Brock Lesnar squash match never goes down. It's here's the thing: I hate the squash match, squash match, but I like the idea of Kofi at least getting one. We know he'll probably he it's not even probably he will never get another WWE title championship. A win or probably match to be honest with you i don't ever see it happening again in the remainder of his career i could be wrong but i am glad that i was able to see it i was glad i was able to be a part of that moment outside of everything else with the title reign it's to be desired especially how it ended but i'd rather be in a timeline where he actually wins than in a timeline where it just never happens so it's truly unbelievable to think how an injury to a wrestler can alter the trajectory of WWE history. Number 3, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash re-sign in 1996. Oh. In 1996, two of WWE's top stars, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, decided to leave the company. The two were happy to stay in WWE, yet WCW were offering a lucrative contract with guaranteed money for less dates, yep. so it was no-brainer as far as they were concerned. The two leaving and signing for WCW would lead to the formation of the NWO alongside yeah. Hulk Hogan, and this would result in WCW becoming the hottest pro wrestling company in North America. What would have happened if Hall and Nash didn't jump ship? The NWO would have never existed nope. and WCW would have never had their major boom. Nope. Also, if WCW remained in the same established position, then WWE would have been less inclined to introduce an edgier product and yep. usher in the Attitude Era. Yep. Additionally, if Hall and Nash re-signed with WWE in 96, then the infamous curtain call never goes down. If the curtain call doesn't happen, Triple H wins the annual King of the Ring yep. and Stone Cold Steve Austin never delivers the iconic Austin 316 promo. It, that's crazy them leaving changed everything and it birthed ultimately you know this version of stone cold well not birthed it but it it stamped it it got people to really like hone in we got something here and it doesn't change the direction of wwe like he says because they had to put on a better, edgier product because WCW was kicking their ass. That's crazy. No India, NWO. That's crazy, bro. Promo. This is an alternative timeline that would have had many twists and turns, and it would ultimately alter the WWE we know today. Yep. Number two, Bret Hart doesn't jump ship to WCW. Uh. What would have happened if Bret Hart didn't jump ship to WCW in 97? Well, the almost obvious thing is that the Montreal Screwjob would have been avoided. Yeah. The Montreal Screwjob is one of the most famous real-life events in pro wrestling history. It would have happened. And with this kayfabe shattering event never taking place, where does this lead the world of kayfabe heading into the Attitude Era? Hart failing to jump ship to WCW in 97 also results in Hart being a key figure into WWE in the 2000s. Naturally, this would mean that Hart never 
ever wrestles Goldberg at yep. 99 Starcade event and ultimately would have never had to retire. Yeah. Hart would have then been able to have dream matches against the likes of Eddie Guerrero and Kurt Angle uh -huh. under the WWE banner. Hart himself would discuss how his career would have panned out and during this incredible interview with Fightful, Hart predicts that he would have taken Pat Patterson's job in WWE. That's I was going to work in some facet of the office. I was actually under, if my memory serves me right, I think I was going to take Pat Patterson's job and work with the matches. Wow. Another notable butterfly effect in Hart leaving for WCW in 97 was the creation of the Mr. McMahon character. Uh -huh. The evil Mr. McMahon character would have become a central antagonist on WWE TV following Survivor Series. So if Hart stays in the company in 97, does the Mr. McMahon character become a pivotal player on screen? I don't think so. I think there's a good chance it probably wouldn't have happened that way. It wouldn't have happened that way. Or maybe it would have in another situation, but he leaned into it so much that it worked. All because, you know, the, his issues with Brett. So, oh, it's crazy to think about that. If this never happens, this means that the McMahon versus Stone Cold rivalry that was arguably one of the reasons for WWE's boom period never even occurs. Yep. And number one, the day one pay-per-view. I said it at the beginning of this video. I'm glad this was the number one <laughs> at the top. No pun intended. I'm glad this is here. It had to be here. It's one of the biggest butterfly effects ever in WWE. WWE's first and only day one pay-per-view was about to be headlined by Roman Reigns vs Brock Lesnar for the Universal title. According to reports at the time, the creative plans were for Lesnar to win the matchup and put a definitive end to Reigns' run as champion. Uh -huh. Over the Raw brand, the multi-man WWE title match was set to feature Seth Rollins coming out on top and becoming the new WWE champion. When it was announced that Reigns had tested positive for COVID-19, this forced WWE to change the plans. Uh -huh. Lesnar would be added to the title match and would end up winning the respective title, and WWE moved forward with a title versus title match yep. between Lesnar and Reigns for the top build match at WrestleMania 38. If Reigns didn't get COVID in 2022, then what exactly does the main event scene in WWE look like heading into WrestleMania 38? There's no way WWE will book a Reigns vs Lesnar match again for WrestleMania, so yeah. where does this leave two of WWE's biggest stars? Also, if Rollins walks into WrestleMania 38 as WWE Champion, does he still face a returning Cody Rhodes, or does Rhodes take on a different opponent? Another key butterfly effect moment here is Biggie. Biggie was WWE Champion coming into the show, and if Rollins wins the title, did WWE commit to booking a feud between Biggie and Rollins for the title? heading into uh -huh. WrestleMania 38. If this is the case, then this means that Biggie doesn't go back to SmackDown and likely wouldn't have found himself in the infamous yeah. match, which resulted in him breaking his neck. Yeah. Crazy to think about, right? What do you guys think of these alternative realities? It's crazy. To me, I still think, I don't know if, maybe Cody does return, but he doesn't become champion. I don't see it. Or maybe he does. Maybe he ends up facing Seth. That could be a thing. You, the Cody thing could still happen, but once again, like I said, we don't get those matches with Roman and Cody, those and the how big it felt. It, we don't. So I don't know. It's crazy to think because he caught COVID, it changed the landscape of WWE. We don't get one of the longest reigning WWE title reigns all of all time. We don't get that. And most likely Vince would have turned Roman babyface then. That was the idea to get Roman to be a babyface. That's all he wanted. So, I don't know, man. It's, it's crazy to think there's other timelines out there that have some situations and scenarios that, uh, you know, we didn't get to see <laughs> if you believe in other timelines and stuff. So, hey, comment down below. Let me know the craziest butterfly, uh, butterfly effect that you feel like... Um, obviously had the biggest effect in wwe you know a lot of people are going to say the situation with roman reigns catching COVID. hell you can even go back to uh essentially what if roman reigns uh came back and uh decided you know what i'm gonna keep doing it vince's way because remember, Roman was like, I can't come back as a babyface. What if he never decides to do that? What if he decides to just kind of go with what Vince had creatively? Well, we have gotten the heel Roman Reigns if, if Roman doesn't say anything about it. If he just goes along with it, well, we have got a heel Roman Reigns. Or say Vince doesn't agree and says, nah. And what if Roman Reigns doesn't resign and said, I'm good? What happens then? Like, there's a lot of things, you know, that depending on a person's situation and what their response is, change the landscape of the company. Could potentially have. So I appreciate all love sport. Road to 
Hunt 50k. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See y'all next one. Peace.